Hey guys, uh, we're going to be attempting a glitchless uh, speedrun of Hellpoint. This will only be the first time that I've run through this uh, route from start to finish, so uh, it's still pretty rough. So we're not going to be uh, resetting, uh, even if we end up dying a lot, because at this point, as long as I can improve upon my last time, I'm going to be pretty happy with it. Unfortunately, I just had a, um, a run die to Black Hole Hour, which you can see is in effect right now. It's one of the many random components of this game that can be an issue. And it is going to make the start of the game a little harder too. Um, so the breach that we got there uh, is actually mandatory because um, we're going to end up dying uh, in the next uh, couple of seconds here. And we're going to be doing that on purpose because it opens up a room uh, in the next section of the tutorial here. So now we're kind of going to get started for real. Uh, so we've got our weapon equipped. That will kind of carry us through the two first main areas of the game. So we're going to hit this elevator here, um, it's going to attract all of these enemies. We're also going to activate this door here. Main reason I'm going to activate that first is because of this uh, demon guy. He's only here because it's black hole hour, so that's very annoying. This is the room that we needed to die in order to open. Um, but now that this is open, we can safely uh, climb up here. What we picked up here is the port dissident credentials, which is basically an uh, access key to an area later in the game. You won't need that for like quite a bit, but... Um, you can get it really early on and it saves a little bit of time. Hopefully the fact that we start to run out in Black Hole Hour is going to be uh, advantageous later. Because um, you can totally get your uh, route blocked off by Horde Event, which is hard to deal with. So coming up is the first boss of the run. This is a slow fight just because you don't have a lot of resources to fight with at this point in time. box on that is kind of wide. This is a good cycle. It's a bit risky to hit him when he's floating because he could stop doing that pretty quickly.
kind of want him to come out into the room a little bit. Because if he's standing next to the wall, I can't really uh, run around them. One more hit. And we're good. There we go. That was not a bad fight. So next up, we need to mash through this dialogue. I'm not sure if any of the uh, other options are faster, um, but not having to time your inputs is kind of nice. Uh, after you pick the last answer, you can also start moving towards the door. I'm gonna get the Omnicube here. It can actually be useful later on in the run. Um, there are some doors that you need to actually use the Omnicube to reset yourself uh, to open. So I'm going to go up to about 5 reflex here, and then the rest goes into energy. Energy is kind of going to be our most important resource early on. Um, foresight doesn't, um, doesn't do a ton of damage scaling relative to the number of extra shots you can get with more energy, as far as I can tell. We do eventually want to start putting points into Foresight as well, but uh, at least initially getting more energy is more important. One of the reasons also for that is because uh, obviously getting more energy with melee attacks is more risky also. So here we're going to menu out, and how that works in this game is that it typically sets you back to the last breach you interacted with. Um, sometimes it will put you back at the start of an area instead. But for the most part, this is super helpful in terms of saving travel time. So with that done, we can proceed to... Um, the next area of the game, which is going to start off with a very long elevator ride that we can't really do much about, unfortunately. We have our elevator. I'm gonna use this moment to uh, equip our Omni Cube in case we do need to use it later.
Gonna get this breach in case I end up dying on this next section. So if anyone wants to try using a ranged build rather than uh, the magic weapon that I'm using, there's a rifle you can get in this section. Um, I don't think the... Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, we're just going to have to reset that, that elevator real quick. Just about missed it. There are axions on top of that second platform there you can get. But the jump is a little bit tricky, especially if you're trying to go fast. So we're coming up here on the second boss. I might have to uh, try this a couple of times because I don't have a lot of health coming into the fight. giving me a bad pattern so far. Definitely being a bit of a jerk right here. This is basically the behavior that we want for the fight. Almost got enough uh, for another health potion here. Which would be great. Oh, so close. Yeah, unfortunately, um, without heals, that fight can be a little bit tough. Just because his pattern is slightly random. If you do get into a good cycle, he'll keep doing the uh, lunging attack over and over again. And what I do there is I, I immediately follow up with a dodging attack because that brings me closer to him, uh, also while avoiding the attack itself. And then as long as you hit him as he's turning around, that seems to trigger another lunging attack. So let's, uh, let's give this another shot.
The duration of this attack is kind of random, so I play it safe. That was kind of exactly the type of cycle that we want. <laughs> I got a little bit greedy there. Okay. So before we get this breach, we're just going to get a few more Axions first. Just because every bit helps in the beginning. This is not useful, I think. Lost hatchet, no. Okay, um, we're gonna get as much energy. We're gonna put a little bit into foresight. Um, be good. You gotta be careful about not mashing through that dialogue, because um, if you do, you'll get San District instead of Ikari Walkways. And Ikari Walkways is essentially the foundation of this run. It gives us a lot of the key items uh, that we need. It's also just a lot faster than going through San District. The only main benefit of going through San is that you um, get to access a Risen do uh, Domain earlier, which is actually super useful, but um, I've tested both routes and I found this to be most uh, effective. want this guy to come out of the corridor so we can kind of just jump over him like that. Um, the, up here what we find is the Hedron of Light, which is going to be our main projectile weapon. Just going to equip that now real quick. Uh, we're probably going to have to end up resetting on this boss, but I'll, I'll give him one attempt. Um, not resetting the run, but at least doing another attempt, because we're really low on health right now. And uh, we don't have any potions to boot. So it would basically have to be a perfect fight. As you can tell, you can jump over a lot of the enemies in this game. Uh, and even if you don't make it over, it will push them. Even if you normally wouldn't be able to push them. So it's a great way of clearing like tight corridors and stuff like that. So we want to try to get him to fall down off that platform because fighting him up there is really tight and we need space to run around him. Right now, he's kind of being a little bit of a jerk. Okay, that's what we want. Also, making him break a lot of this terrain is useful.
That is a little bit scary. That shield bash comes out so quick. As does the dash. Yeah, so we will need to do another attempt at that fight, but that wasn't bad. All of his attacks do a lot of damage, though. Um, so we can take a couple of hits if we're at full health, but if we're at anywhere below full health, uh, he'll basically one-shot us. So that's why it's kind of critical to like not take damage on the way to the fight. It's a little bit hard though, depending on the layout of the enemies here and if we have any ranged attackers. Like I said, the spawn patterns and patrols of the enemies do make this run a little bit inconsistent or unpredictable. Oh, now he's being... okay. He found another way to get down. That's fine. If you hit his shield at all, uh, he won't take any damage from any of the projectiles, which is kind of nonsense. Okay, so we need to get some melee hits in. That's something you gotta watch out for. If he charges his cannon as he's dashing, he'll fire immediately afterwards. I would say that this is probably one of the harder fights in the game, because we're still pretty weak at this point. I need him to move out a little bit because it's hard to attack him in the corner like that. Yeah, this is getting a little bit sketch right here. There we go. Oh, that was really bad timing.
So you can kind of see why energy is so important. There we go. Uh, problem though is that we have zero health, so we might actually end up dying to the regular enemies moving forward. Um, but let's see how it works out. Ha, <laughs> okay. That's fine. We, we got the boss down, so... It'll be pretty quick to get back here. Uh, that's another thing about Ikari walkways is that the, the run distance to the boss is very quick. I maybe should have tried dodging that projectile rather than jumping. Um, you have quite a lot of iframes on your dodges in this game. And as you might have noticed, you can dodge cancel a lot of your attacks as long as you input the right timing. Basically, any attack can be uh, dodge canceled if you hit it as soon as um, as your attack lands on the enemy. to pick up our... Uh, this is going to make this section actually a little bit trickier than normal. Because we need to get... There we go. As long as we get down here, we're fine. We don't need to get this breach because there's a breach right on the other side of this door. go ahead and I'm gonna um, synchronize this breach with the breach synchronizer we got earlier and we're gonna go back to the observatory and the reason we want to do that is we want to equip our conductors and the weapons that we're gonna uh, continue to use uh, I notice my frame rate is also dropping which happens sometimes um, So I'm going to probably load uh, in and out of the game right after this. So to use this staff, we're going to need eight reflex. And after that, we're going to go just continue pushing into energy. Um, so to just improve my uh, frame rate, I'm going to menu out here. It seems to like clear the cache or something when you do, so it um, gets rid of that hitching. So in this area, we're gonna need to pick up a key, uh, and there's a lot of fast enemies here, um, so it can be a little bit tricky. You 
you can kind of get uh, end up getting stuck pretty easily. Uh, so we'll see how that works out for us. Yeah, as you can tell, there's like a lot going on here. Preserving health for the upcoming boss fight is actually not super important because he will one-shot us in most cases anyway. Just like that. Yeah, I was a little bit too far forward. Um, like I said, with the um, Hedron of Light, you want to make sure that all of your projectiles hit uh, for maximum damage. So you want to be close enough to where the, uh, the projectiles that are at the wide end of the arc actually connect, but obviously you don't want to get punched in the face either. That is suboptimal. So, so far, I think we've done all of the bosses on the second, ow, dude, uh, second attempt, so let's see if we can keep that trend going. For the most part with this boss fight, you want to try to keep your distance, and you want to try to keep him at bay using the, the cube because this arena is actually rather small and you can get sort of pushed into a corner. Oh god, slightly too close again. That's all right. This is probably the um, hardest fight we're going to get in a little while. Ozzy is sort of the biggest pain that we still have to deal with because his attacks are fairly random and hard to manipulate. And his, uh, his attacks come out very quickly as well. Ufuros, which is the first of the big bosses we'll tackle. He does a lot of damage and the fight is pretty slow, but he's uh, quite predictable. Okay, so let's try to play this a little bit more safe this time. Whenever he does the twirling attack with both hands, I like to go for the... Uh, the melee attack because it's safe. And you can see how much energy that regens. Oh man! Gosh, gosh and golly, that was, uh, that was a shame. We basically had that fight. All right, I just got a little bit sloppy there. Like I said, we're not resetting on this run. Um, I'm gonna complete it and see if we can get a better time than my best, which is two hours currently and seven minutes. Uh, and I, there's a ton of room for improvement. Um, I think fully optimized, this is probably like 120 or something like that. Maybe even less. 
the main issue, as you can see, is kind of just not dying. Like, the routing and everything is, is pretty simple. Mm. Yeah, the, the real issue with this arena is that it's pretty small, and at some point you gotta make your way around him uh, to not get backed into a corner. So that's why you want to try to use the cube to keep him uh, as far pushed back as possible. And it's a good thing this uh, run is in game time, or else all of these loads uh, would have been a bit painful. Lasers. At least this is another boss run that's pretty quick to get back to. It's actually the case for most of the bosses. Euphoros is actually the hardest. Oh, well, that was pretty unsafe. So this is the point where we want to start uh, putting points into uh, Foresight. 15 energy is pretty good, and we can refill it pretty quickly with our staff. Uh, the reason we want to start dumping points into Foresight at this point is because we want to be able to interrupt Ozzy's uh, attack where he summons uh, enemies. And that seems to be related to the amount of damage you do. We also want to start putting some points into um, these projectiles will one shot us by the way so you gotta look out for those. Um, we also want to start upgrading our uh, cube at some point to scale uh, our foresight as well. So this fight is fairly predictable. This is the attack that you want to bait. And you don't want to get hit by that. Because <laughs> that hurts a lot. You got to be really close to make all of the hits uh, actually hit with this fight. You want 
to kind of get back into the center. Mask is actually a random drop. So here we're just menu resetting to get back to where we were before. to fight the first big boss of the game. This guy actually has the most annoying run up if you have to reset it. The first time it's fairly okay, it's still a little bit tricky, uh, but if you have to reset on this boss fight it's a lot trickier to get back because you have to call an elevator. Uh, and there are a lot of enemies in that area. So as long as we actually hit the door here, we're invulnerable, so we don't have to worry about the projectiles, by the way. As long as you're interacting with anything in this game, you can't take damage, which is nice. Um, but yeah, as I, I was saying, like running back to this boss can get really rough, so let's try to see if we can get it on the first try. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> I probably actually have a few axions I can consume. Good enemy uh, spawns here. This whole area can be a lot tighter with enemies than it was, so that's good. The next section up here, though, is, is the difficult part that we need to deal with. Actually, it's just a little further up. So yeah, already this is kind of a long run to get to the boss fight, and then there's, as I, as I said, this elevator that you need to deal with. These enemies are a bit of a pain. Luckily, uh, we didn't get one spawning in front of the door this time. But wow, all of this enemy layout here is actually really good. You can get a lot of different enemies in that area and certain combinations are definitely a lot harder to deal with. Okay, this is Euphoros. He's the first big boss of the game. He is quite deadly, but he is also kind of slow and methodical. One thing that you do need to look out for is the fact that his attacks leave craters that will deal burning damage. And you don't want to start accumulating that. If he does a shout here, you can go in for a melee attack really safely. Okay. This is an annoying thing he does. He covers the arena in 
lava that will trip you up. It doesn't do a lot of damage, it just staggers you ever so slightly. So you basically just want to wait until this goes away, in my opinion. Because it's very unsafe to be doing stuff while that's uh, up. Whenever he starts casting something, you just want to get away from the center of the arena. This is an annoying thing he does too. If you get close enough to him, he can't actually hit you with this attack, and he will stop doing it, so that's the best way of kind of canceling it. Oh, I thought he was casting something there. That attack is totally punishable. That leap will one-shot you also. As you can see, I'm actually on fire now, so I'm going to need to uh, keep an eye on my health. I do need more energy, so I need to be able to go in for more melee attacks here. There's probably more opportunities that I'm uh, utilizing right now, but I'm playing it a little bit safe. This is probably one of the slowest fights in the game. This is tricky right now because I can't get close to him because of the lava. So we're just going to need to dodge these uh, projectiles. Should be safe out here from the rocks. Yeah, I want to try to make sure that all of my attacks are hitting. <laughs> that, that jumping attack was a little unfair because I, I couldn't see him right there. Pretty good energy right there. Okay. Yeah, that's why you don't want to run too fast into that attack, because the hitbox of his stomp remains active for a little bit after it lands. So I'll, I'll basically get to showcase the uh, run up back to this boss and what you kind of have to deal with. Although with the enemy patterns that we got, it shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. Um, there might be strategies in this game optimizing around getting effigies to lower the difficulty of areas. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if there are any directly on this route, uh, but it's something uh, people could look into. We were pretty close. Um, I might take a few more risks uh, on gaining energy here, just to try to speed up the fight a little bit. Um, it seems after the right hand grab is a good opportunity to counterattack, but you got to make sure it's not the uh, not the slam, because the slam has a follow up. So you got to be able to differentiate between those two. Okay, so this is a harder enemy set right here. Not sure why it was different. It might just be the patrolling of the enemies. Yep. 
Yep. Yeah, because we don't have any tenacity, um, which is the equivalent of uh, poise from Dark Souls in this game, uh, we can't really absorb any hits without staggering. So we can very easily get killed by anything that has some sort of uh, strong attack. And those guards are actually um, some of the harder enemies to deal with in the game. But even though I've been dying quite a lot, you can see how all of these bosses with um, enough practice are very doable. I think Euphoros is probably the one that's is always going to take a while unless we can optimize ways to get more powerful before this boss fight. And now we need to call this elevator, which is why this part is so hard. Because we now we gotta essentially wait until the elevator comes down. Luckily, these guys are too fat to get in the door. Um, you can also get followed by your ghost here, of course, which makes it even worse. So that's definitely why we don't want to reset on you for us if possible. Yeah, I'm gonna try to focus in this fight, so I'll be a little bit quiet here. I think this is probably one of my favorite boss designs in the game. I mean, it's very Doom-like. I also don't know why he's missing an arm, but it's kind of just a little bit of like a cool detail. Leaping attack is absolutely terrifying. It's one of the reasons I try to stay close to him as much as possible.
There we go. Only one death on this guy is actually pretty good. We're probably far ahead of my estimate. I haven't put up splits for this yet, as you can see. Um, let's consume some Axions here too, while we're going. Let's see how many Hedron upgrades we can afford. Plus four is good. And we'll probably be able to level up a little bit. Okay, pretty happy with all of that. So now we're going to head to Port Isidon. Port Isidon is a fairly short area, which is good. Alma Mater is probably the largest in the game. And this is where we're using those credentials that we picked up way earlier in the run. Almost at the start. This area is tricky though, so even though it's fairly short, uh, it does require a little bit of practice. And then the boss here is, in my opinion, probably the worst. Um, just in terms of randomness and uh, sort of acceleration. His attacks come out like very abruptly sometimes. Again, enemy spawns uh, here are kind of random. So you want to grab those and you want to get up here as quickly as possible because this is essentially sort of a trap room, which will spawn a lot of enemies. So you want to hit this switch. Um, and then you want to get back out as soon as possible. Ignoring the enemies that are already out here. Uh, another issue that we're running into right now is that it's black hole hour. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, but it will block off the boss room. But I think we're going to spend enough time in this area that it's not going to matter. I want to get up here as quickly as possible, and we're going to basically just get the first checkpoint before we do anything else. Um, there's a nice armor set here that we can't use. So first things first, we're going to get a couple of keys. My health is really low here. So it's quite possible that I could end up dying. Actually, we don't even need to continue here, do we? Because we already got everything that we needed, so we can actually... Hey, I was going to try to just quit out to the menu here, but dying is essentially just as effective. So what we got there, we got one of the boss keys that we need to open up the boss door, but there's one more. But we also got this silo key that lets us into this area. This enemy is uh, pretty dangerous, it's similar to the boss, it's actually the exact same as one of the bosses we fought earlier. So. Getting around her is important. Lots of uh, elevators here, or lifts rather. Um, need to jump across here. So here you don't actually want to go all the way down, you want to 
jump over here, and then you want to roll off this edge. get around this gal here okay and we need to get this that's everything that we needed from here and we can back out so now we have both of the keys that we need to access the boss unfortunately we're still in black hole hour um, so that's gonna be problematic We're gonna just have to effectively try to fight the uh, the horde event blocking the boss room because there's nothing else we can do right now and it's gonna pass in way too long. So normally you would just go through here and then you could fight the boss in the subsequent area here. As you can tell, this is a bit of a nightmare. Like I said, we don't really have a choice here. Our choices are to wait out until this event is over, or actually win it. So essentially we're going to be either we're going to be wasting time here regardless so we might as well try to beat it. This is definitely a part of the run that could be optimized in some way uh, in terms of getting to areas with the right timing. We're about halfway through black hole hour right now. Again, using jumps to um push enemies There's just so many of them. It's very unfortunate. Feel free to fast forward past this part in the video if you're watching this retrospectively. I still think I'm probably on record pace for my own timing. So I'll keep going. Because uh, we can always do a better run later. Again, I'm trying to take these guys down as fast as possible is important. Of course, 
Try not to waste any shots as well. Seems like also by running around the pit that you can get enemies to fall down, so that's kind of another strat you can use in this room, but again, optimally you wouldn't even be fighting in this room at this point. Um, we're getting close to the end of Black Hole Hour, thankfully. We probably need to do a couple more attempts at this, unfortunately, but at that point it'll be over one way or another. As you can tell, these enemies are also pretty fast. And especially that the flying hands are very fast. pretty close to beating this now. There's one more guy. Wow, we did it. Well, that's a bonus, I guess. Um, I'm gonna actually reset here and get back to the checkpoint to heal up uh, and also spend down those Axions. Thanks for sticking with me through that, that was painful. But I think if we have a good couple of attempts on Ozzy, I can still get a good time. Relatively speaking, of course. Oh, we got a breach synchronizer from that too, that's useful. Um, that saves us having to pick up one later. It's kind of hard not to take a hit there sometimes, depending on how those enemies spawn. But yeah, you can see how short this area actually is if you know where to go. Can't remember what this is. 
nothing useful. Uh, we don't have the flashlight for the Omni Cube, so this fight is a little dark. Wait, did one of the smaller enemies follow me down? What the heck? Oh, I forgot that he had that follow-up. Okay, that was bad. We missed the first attack and so he was able to spawn these enemies. Um, he spawns between two and eight or six maybe of these at a time. So yeah, that was just a really bad um, beginning to that fight. Um, so we basically want to make sure that we always have enough for two volleys of our um, Hedron left in order to try to cancel Ozzy out of summoning uh, add-ons. Because once he summons add-ons, the fight becomes uh, twice as tough because you need to avoid and kill them as well as keep an eye on Ozzy who is already a handful to deal with uh, on his own. Somehow he still got off that summon. Oh gosh, I was trying to go for a quick kill strat there um, because he did get the summon. I think it's preferable if you're standing in front of him and hitting him in the face to knock him out of it. Um, but it's a little bit random what kind of position you're in when he wants to start trying to do that. So as long as we're dying early on in the fight, it's okay. Oh, that guy decided to spawn now, that's great. That small enemy is there most of the time, but he hadn't been, so I wasn't quite expecting him. Like I said, there's a lot of spawn patterns in this game that are recognizable, but which one you get uh, is... Uh, Kind of a dice roll. You gotta be very careful about his uh, flipping attack because the hitbox is actually insane. As you can tell, Ozzy's attacks hit pretty hard. Uh, I was being a little bit overzealous there with the melee follow-ups. Um, you kind of want to keep... There's two distances that you want with Ozzy. There's either medium close or super far away. Um, if you're just standing uh, slightly... Um, at a distance from him, he can do like a lunging jump attack that uh, hits for a lot of damage and comes out super quick. Um, so you want to be either far enough to wait away to where um, he's not going to hit you with that, or you want to be close enough to where uh, it's not going to get triggered, typically.
Okay, we actually canceled him out of summoning enemies right there, so that was great. Now we can't attack again for a little bit. This is going to be a lunge. Because um, we need energy in case he tries to summon enemies again. Okay, he's going to do a flip. That is risky. Okay, we knocked him out of another summon. That's good. Oh, this might be bad. I've actually never seen him cancel out of that um, flip before. This has been a pretty good fight so far. That was very good. Uh, I gotta remember to pick up the credentials. Did I do that already? No, it's down here. So here we're gonna port back to um, main base and we're gonna try to upgrade our cube a little bit more. Now, that was probably like, what, the fifth attempt or something on Ozzy? Um, again, I think this is the, the boss that's gonna give people Trouble. Okay, get one more level on our Hedron. We can probably level up a little bit more. Uh, let's get energy at this point. If you're wondering why we have 10 reflex at this point, I think it's because the, uh, the Hedron gives you a reflex buff at a certain level. Uh, that might be something that one could optimize around and only get six reflex, but I'm not sure how that would work out timing-wise. I guess what you could do is you could check uh, how close uh, your level is, uh, your weapon is to leveling up. But you basically want to start using the Disciple Furula as, as soon as you get it. Because from that point onwards, it's basically just uh, boss fight after boss fight. The speedrun is actually almost like more of a boss rush. Than anything else. I'm going to go a little bit off to the side here just to try to ignore this dude. So next up is Arisen Domain, which is probably my favorite area design-wise in the entire game. And it also actually has some of my favorite enemies. At least when they appear as normal enemies and not bosses. So this is this has got sort of like um, a Blade Runner, Stargate... Uh, Deus Ex kind of vibe going on, which I think is really neat. So this area is going to be a particularly kind of rough section because my routing here is not at all optimized. There are better videos you can watch for that uh, in the uh, glitched invincibility run speed runs. Uh, we got an extra breach synchronizer, so we can skip the one I usually get here. There's one on that balcony up there, and this room right here. But since we already have an extra one, we don't need to get that. So we can proceed directly to the next area. You want to jump here through these crates. This is actually the main way to progress through here. I don't think we're actually bo gonna bother leveling up again just to save time and because we're powerful enough so picking up items at this point is a little redundant
So to progress in this area, we need four keys. This is kind of a little bit of a theme in some of the areas of this game where you get to sort of a main area and then have to branch out and get some additional items. Um, I'm going to do my routing for these. Uh, but like I said, feel free to do your own research and, and figure out what the best path is. I go here to start off with because I want to get this item, which is the Leech Enhancer, which makes it so that your uh, staff almost like immediately regenerates all of your uh, energy which at this point is pretty late in the run, so it's not like it's going to help us a ton. And if, if it's possible to route through Arisen Domain earlier uh, to get that item, that would be great. But like I said, I've had trouble trying to go this path first. This wall is a little bit like glitchy sometimes and you end up kind of getting stuck on it a little bit. So you just gotta be careful jumping up. Tiger friend over here. Gonna be a bunch of those throughout this area. You can jump off of here onto that circle and, and kind of skip the path that I'm taking right now, but I, I'm playing it safe because I don't have a lot of health. Uh, like maximum health. So now currently we have two out of the four seals that we need. Okay, we took a couple of kicks to the face there. What I actually should have done here is lower the ladder that's on the um, where we just picked up the seal because that would allow me to get back up there instantaneously pretty much but instead we're gonna have to end up running around the same route we just took so that's gonna lose us a fair bit of time so that's like a safe strat that you probably should add, um, add to your list So yeah, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, there are actually two shortcuts you can unlock to get up here more quickly. But it's going to be a lot safer this time because we already have one of the seals that we need. Oh, oh. almost messed that up. I'm very curious what this time is going to be. Um, I feel like it's going to actually end up being fairly close to my last run. Uh, mostly because of that black hole hour mess. But overall this has been um, a lot smoother. So I think with practice, um, you can still save a lot of time on this run. So now, instead of taking the right in here, we're just going to continue straight on and up to the left. And basically what we're doing here, we're getting access to another area that we don't have a key for at the moment uh, by dropping down off a ledge and hoping that it's not going to kill us because uh, the drop distance is quite tall. And like I said, we don't have a lot of health. Um, so what I do want to try is to jump on top of one of these uh, platforms right here. And then uh, we want to snake around this way. And then down here is the 
third of the four, uh, four seals that we need. So here we menu out. one more seal that we need and this one is basically just going to be down this way this weapon right here that you can pick up is one of my favorites in the game it's um, the linked espadon which is sort of like a great sword that uh, has amazing reach and stun potential Uh, this section up here is just a little tricky because you need to get around these guys without getting killed. And there's like three of them. But yeah, we managed to do that pretty well. Menu back to the main area. And now we're coming up on what is the last boss fight of this run. Um, if you were to do an all bosses run of this game, you would have to kill the final boss. Uh, who is honestly a little bit of a pain to deal with. So I'm, I'm happy that the 80% uh, glitchless uh, doesn't worry about that. There are multiple endings to this game that you can get. Um, and there are actually two, um, actually three kind of variants of the final boss fight which are kind of increasingly hard. And we're not gonna do uh, any of them. This is me, this is my ghost. I think this is actually the first time we've interacted during this run. I'm pretty lucky to not come across him. Um, this game has sort of a death mechanic where when you die, you drop your um, axions, your uh, souls as it were. Uh, and you spawn a copy of yourself with the exact same equipment and stats. And it can be dangerous because we are such a glass cannon that we can very easily kill ourselves uh, when we run across our ghost like that. So here we just need to do a quick chat with uh, this council over here. Wrong button. Uh, doesn't I don't think it matters what you say first. Secondly, you wanna ask to see um, Namundus, and then you wanna tell him that you're investigating what happened on the space station. Any other option? Uh, will not grant you access, though. Luckily, it won't like soft lock the game or anything. Um, you just have to restart the dialogues, which is obviously suboptimal. Okay, here we go. Hitting them on this with all of your attacks is actually pretty easy because he's so big and tall. That will insta-kill you, by the way, and you need to jump uh, to avoid that attack. <laughs> like I just missed there. If you see him doing that, it's probably better to back off a little bit so you have more time to react. Uh, it was kind of unlucky to get that attack twice in a row like that because it, it's fairly rare that he does it. Hopefully we'll get it on the next attempt and we won't have to uh, try this boss too many times because we're so close to the end right now. 
I'm gonna try to avoid fighting my ghost here. I'm gonna keep a distance so he doesn't start uh, running. And there we go. He can still probably shoot us from there, so we need to be a little careful. Again, this is such a cool area of the game. Okay, let's give good old Namundus another attempt. Fun fact about the um, all of the dialogue that the uh, the end boss spawns, especially in the beginning of the game, when you're talking to him, um, will persist through loading screens. And even like if you go back to the main menu, the the subtext will often appear. So we need to basically go back here to. The computer that we access that like almost at the beginning of the run after the first boss and that'll take us to the uh, end area and basically all we have to do now is talk to the final boss and that'll be the end of the run Again, I'm super curious about my pace here. We've died a bunch of times, but self think is going to be uh, a little bit of an improvement. Just in... Well, we shouldn't actually have any chance of dying here, so... No, we don't want to agree to help. I'm playing on Steam offline mode, by the way. Um, so I, I'm not quite sure why we're seeing online uh prompts um we also need to power this switch Guys being like rather persistent. Here you just want to mash the first uh, option in the dialogue. And that's the end of the run. Uh, time is when you hit credits, um, how you can skip going through all of the credits is to um, actually Alt F4 out of the game. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't have my screen capture set up the right way. Uh, I, I basically only have it for game capture so it would black out for a second I don't want to leave that. So we're going we're gonna to mash through the credits which is fine but we're going to have to sit through the, the cutscene before uh, at the start of New Game Plus before we can check the time. So this is basically like 5 seconds lost or something like that which in the grand scheme of this run is not quite a lot at this point. Obviously, if you want to really optimize this later, um, you should reload the game itself. 
you can't actually skip this dialogue the second time around, which is interesting because we skipped it at the very beginning of the run. Yeah, so maybe this is actually more of like 30 seconds of time. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I've had fun trying to route this game. It's been a little bit frustrating, but I feel like this route is pretty solid. And with the right optimizations, you could do a lot to get this time closer to uh, an hour. This is the start of New Game Plus. Uh, the narrative of this game is actually kind of interesting. Uh, I recommend checking it out. Okay, so now we can check our time. And the time is... 1 hour 25 minutes. That's actually really good. Again, thanks for watching guys, and uh, I hope we can do a lot to uh, continue saving time on this run.